Hi everyone and welcome to video number 26 <coughs> excuse me video number 26 on US conflict 1954 to 75 now in the previous video ladies and gentlemen we were looking at the increased level of opposition in America to the Vietnam War based on media coverage opposition to the draft increase in death rates fed up with the lies Veterans were coming back from Vietnam and telling the truth of what was going on. Put all of that together and there was an increase in opposition. This video looks at two key events which actually increased that level of opposition to the war. Both were very, very closely linked with the idea of media coverage. Now, one of these events was in Vietnam and one of these events was back in America. So we'll start with the event in Vietnam first. March 1968, a tiny village in South Vietnam became world famous, ladies and gentlemen. And that village was called My Lai. There it is, just in South Vietnam. Now, why did this small village of My Lai, just a few hundred people, why did that get fame across the world? Well, hopefully, I'll explain. So we're in March 1968. A United States patrol, sending the troops, is helicoptered in to an area by My Lai village to do a search and destroy mission. They had information that the Viet Cong, the communist troops, were in that area. The American army sent in two platoons of Charlie Company. Now, a little bit of background about Charlie Company, ladies and gentlemen. They had suffered severely at the hands of the Viet Cong troops. February, four had been hit by sniper fire. Two had been killed by booby traps. Then they walked smack bang into a minefield. They had lost 40% of their men to the Viet Cong. And ladies and gentlemen, they'd never seen their enemy. They were being picked off. Booby traps, minefields, sniper fire. How do you think the surviving soldiers of Charlie Company felt as they went into that village on that day in March 1968? Any ideas? Well, they've arrived. They've been told the Viet Cong are there. The Viet Cong have killed many of their friends. What happened when Charlie Company arrived at Mai Lai village? Well, they found no Viet Cong. There was no attacks on the American troops in that area. Some of the villagers tried to run away when they saw the American soldiers. They were shot. Over the next four hours, stopping for their lunch break, the soldiers in Charlie Company. First of all, they rounded up all the villagers, but they were made of old men, women, children, toddlers, babies. They rounded them all up. Some women were sexually assaulted. They were then forced into a ditch, all of them unarmed, and they were killed by Charlie Company led by their leader of the, on that day, a man called Lieutenant Cali, C-A-L-L-E-Y. At least 347 were killed, maybe as many as 400. It became known as the Mai Lai Massacre, March 1968. Well, what happened next? Immediately after, the army announced, the American army announced, a successful mission. The Viet Cong base had been destroyed. 128 Viet Cong fighters had been killed. But that was not true, ladies and gentlemen. If the Viet Cong had been in my lie, they'd long since gone. Charlie Company did not kill any Viet Cong fighters that day. They killed civilians. Some soldiers, the helicopter pilots, reported what had happened to their superior officers in the army. Some chiefs of nearby villages 
to nearby to my lie, they reported what had happened to the army officers. So the army had been informed. It then led to a cover up. There was a very rapid, very quick investigation. And then the army admitted 20 civilian deaths, accidental. That might have been the end of it. Maybe the army might have got away with that. But you have to ask yourself the question, ladies and gentlemen, why lie about my lie? Why did the army feel they had to lie? Is it because their actions were indefensible that day? Have a think. So the army have been informed. There's been a quick investigation. The cover up has been put into place. That might have been the end of it. But for those of us who are old enough, we can remember a television program, comedy program called The Two Ronnies. Very, very good old comedy, ladies and gentlemen. Have a look. The Two Ronnies. But here we're looking at two men called Ron. It's the two Rons, ladies and gentlemen. One soldier had taken photos, a man called Ron Haybell. He was a war photographer. And one soldier had collected eyewitness evidence, a man called Ron Rindenhauer. So these two men, both called Ron, they had evidence about what had happened at my lie. Eventually, this evidence was sent to the US media. There's that key thing, the media get involved. It was also sent to US politicians and journalists. The most famous journalist in the My Lai Massacre, ladies and gentlemen, an American journalist called Seymour Hirsch. He was sent the evidence and it led to Life magazine, one of the big important magazines in America, publishing an article and it basically exposed the truth of what happened and it exposed the army cover up. Well, what would be the reaction in America to that? The My Lai Massacre caused a huge shock. It shocked many, many Americans. Many were horrified at what had got on. It was very difficult for the American public to look at photographs of little babies, toddlers, children, and know that within a couple of hours they had been killed by American soldiers. The photos were shown on TV, CBS News. The truth was coming out. An inquiry was set up called the Peers Inquiry. And the result of that inquiry, Lieutenant Kelly ordered the massacre. That was the conclusion. But he was following the orders of superior officers who then covered it up. That was the devastating conclusion of the Peers Inquiry. It led to an increased level of opposition to the war. One, the, the idea of the brutality involved, and two, the disgraceful cover up and lies which followed. What happened then? Well, Lieutenant Kelly was put on trial. He was the only person put on trial for the My Lai Massacre, not his superiors. In March 1971, he was found guilty of 22 murders and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Well, you might think that's the end of it. Well, there's a little bit extra to this story, ladies and gentlemen. 1971, sentenced to 20 years. So we should get out in 1991. But Callie was released after three years. No one else was put on trial. He didn't even serve his three years in prison. He did it in house arrest on a military base. What's that telling you, ladies and gentlemen? Also, importantly, many Americans actually supported Cali. Now, why would they do that? The reason? They knew that many South Vietnamese civilians did indeed support the Viet Cong. And in times of war, people choose their country. They get very, very patriotic. So some people supported Cali and supported the American army despite the My Lai massacre. But it did lead to an increased level of 
opposition. That's the first event, the My Lai Massacre. For the second event, we leave the Vietnam and we head back to America itself. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I was talking about the opposition and the role, the importance of students in the opposition to the Vietnam War. And we have to go to Kent State University in the state of Ohio, May 1970. Now, remember the two events linked together. Students were outraged at this truth emerging about my life. They were outraged about President Nixon, what he was doing in America. So, May the 1st, 1970, about 500 students protest and they burn a copy of the US Constitution. They are protesting against President Nixon's decision to send troops into Cambodia. Have a look at video 24 if you wish to remind yourself of that. Next day, 2nd of May, again, demonstrations. 500 the first day, 1,000 the second day. And a military training base had been, was burned, a building where they, people would go and discuss whether they wanted to join the army. A military training building was burned on the university campus. 3rd of May, again, there's about a thousand students out demonstrating, but this time 900 National Guard move in with rifles and tear gas to face the demonstrations. 4th of May, the demonstrations have been banned, but there's still 2,000 students go out and protest. They are ignoring the, the ban. They are ignoring the National Guard. The National Guard won't stand for this. They fire their tear gas and then they fire their rifles into the crowd, killing four students and injuring nine. Two of the students were innocent bystanders. They weren't even on the demonstration, just passing by. Well, would that look good for America? Again, the media were there. Media coverage, photos, newspapers, articles. Again, it caused shock, both in America and across the world. You've got to remember, America was not an equal society at this time. The people who were killed were white, rich, middle class. The reaction to their deaths in America was different to, for example, some of the deaths of the civil rights, poor, black, working class people. So again, we see this second event, Kent State University, people shot for protesting. Freedom of speech, ladies and gentlemen, it's very important in America. And yet they've been shot for protesting. Again, it leads to an increased level of opposition in some areas of the population to America's involvement in the war in Vietnam. The students went on strike. President Nixon, very forthright gentleman, he referred to these students as campus bums. So, we see a second event, a second event. We've had My Lai in Vietnam, Kent State in America. Both events saw loss of life. Both events led to an increased level of opposition to the Vietnam War. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, what about the world of politics? I mentioned there President Nixon. Well, how was he dealing with it? What was the political situation in the late 60s and early 70s? If you remember the start of the war, the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution in 64, which virtually gave President Johnson carte blanche a free hand to do whatever he wanted in Vietnam. June 1970, Congress repealed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. They're reining in the power that the American president had. Why have they changed their mind? Well, here's some reasons. Number one, cost. $167 billion. Wow. Two, the war was going quite badly. Not the easy win that many had expected. The death rate was increasing. 
Many saw it as unwinnable. The guerrilla tactics of the Viet Cong were proving very, very difficult to battle against. The reaction in America, we've just seen an increased level of opposition. The reaction around the world, countries were beginning to criticize America and their actions, particularly My Lai Massacre. Many politicians feared an escalation of the war involving China and USSR. They feared a possibility of a third world war, nuclear weapons. Also, politics was playing a part. If voters were opposing the draft, if voters were opposing uh, fighting in, a, in Vietnam, if voters were opposing Nixon, well then some politicians will say, well, they might vote for our party, so we need to encourage and support them. So can you see there, the political situation had changed. My lie, Kent State University, politics, the cost, the media, put it all together and we see that there were quite high levels of opposition to American involvement in the Vietnam War. But, ladies and gentlemen, there's always a but in history. Despite this, despite everything I've said over the last two videos, there was still quite a high level of American support for President Nixon and a high level of support for American involvement in the war. Now, why would that be? As ever, the answer is in the next video. So I hope this has been useful. And I'll see you soon. All the best now.